So in the last video we saw that taking both the regular and the seasonal derivative we end up with something that was really nice because basically it was kind of noise uh, but we have still something that we have to explain. So we have these regular bars here at 1 but I'm going to focus in these two bars. So this is close to noise so I'm going to try to remove this part and remember that this part was identified, it was the autoregressive part identified in the partial correlation function. So I'm going to feed one, my first model, it's going to be uh, an ARIMA model for the data with the derivative, sorry, well, no, we don't need to include that. So the order is going to be 0, 1, 0. Remember that this one is related to this derivative, so I'm not going to play with this transform variable. I can play with my original variable, and this one means that I'm forcing you to take the regular derivative. Okay, and now I'm taking the seasonal part, and I'm going to take... I w as I was saying, I want to remove this part, so this is going to 1, 1, 0. Okay, now a couple of more parameters, you know, so you can learn a little bit better how to play with this function. I'm going to say lambda uh, equals 1 or, or directly equals null, so I'm not, I'm not using box cox transformation. And also I can include another parameter, it's going to be include constant equals true. Meaning that one of the models that I want to explore is a model in which we have, remember, this coefficient c, which was a constant in top of the model. And this might account, for instance, for, for the idea that I'm not starting at zero, so overall I have a kind of shift a parameter in, in, my, in my series. Okay? okay, so let's run this model. And now let's plot a couple of things here. So let's do an auto plot of the fit. And now you can see that we only have the seasonal part, okay, we, uh, we are repeating this parameter, we don't need, we don't have this autoregressive, sorry, the regular part, because remember that we have 0 and 0 here, okay, we can also check the coefficients, I'm going to include the library lm, LM test, and I'm going to use coef test fit1, and you can see that my only parameter, which is this, the autoregressive part in the seasonal part is significant, not very much, but it's kind of significant. Okay, let's check the residuals. Check residuals of feed one. And you can see that, okay, this is mm, pretty normal. But again, we still have something here. So we, we haven't been able to capture that one. Actually, we can also, also watch the partial correlation function if we use the GGTS function again, but using the feed one residuals okay so here we go so it looks that we have captured this part so this bar that goes outside we still have this part that probably is related to our regressive part in the seasonal part and we also have something missing there okay this is one model that we could try to fit going back to this plot just taking the derivatives we also could try to explain this part here and i'm going to call that fit number two and i'm going to copy that part fit number two, but it's going to be, instead of attacking the autoregressive part, I'm going to attack the moving average part, okay? So now again, let's plot the poles, the, the roots of the polynomial, everything seems to look fine. Okay, I'm going to copy this, just because I'm lazy. Let's check the coefficients, okay? Both are, uh, the only coefficient is, is significant, let's check the residuals. Okay, much better than before, actually, or more or less the same, not much difference. Okay, and we still have some, these two bars here and one bar there. Okay, we can try to compare both models. So if we take the summary, summary of feed one, we can see the AKEK information criterion is 1622, and feed two, 1623. So bo both models are more or less the same. Same happens for the Bayesian information criterion. So I cannot distinguish between both models. So it seems that I could play and try to remove the, the, the seasonal part, the, 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 sorry, the moving average part of the seasonal part or the autoregressive part. But both models are more or less the same. But I still have to handle this bar here. So uh, my fit number three is going to be, an, again, ARIMA model of my data. And I'm going to I'm going to remove this part. Remember that this part was characterized better in the moving average part. Here I'm going to play with zero, one, one. The seasonal part is going to be the same as before. Uh, let's say, you know, like in here, 
zero one one and again i'm not going to do any box cox transformation but i want to include this bias in order to see what's happening there constant equals sorry equals true and here we go so once again let's plot the roots of the polynomials everything seems to be inside the cycle not one one sign that something is not working pretty well is that one of these red circles is on top of this circumference. So if if this is on top of the circle, then something is wrong. If it's inside it, everything seems to be pretty pretty fine. So cough test uh, fit three. Okay, both coefficients are significant. This is a good sign. Okay, and now let's play the residuals. It's display fit sorry fit three. Oops residuals and here we go much better now we have a very good model actually because everything is inside the bar so i would say that this model is capturing pretty well what is happening here again let's compare the summaries of the models and now my parameter is 1568 which is much lower than 1623 remember that this number is not significant we are using this parameter to compare models not as an absolute value so the fact that this is 16 23 is not relevant what is relevant and that this is much lower than before okay so i think model 3 is pretty good and actually let's check the residuals just in case fit 3 and again this is uh, the same as before we still have something that is not perfectly normal so probably this is kind of skewed and this is probably related to the fact that the original data series let me plot that again GTS Y. So this curves, even removing the trend, this is not symmetric. So you can see that, uh, the, uh, let's say that this valley is wider than the peak. So you can see that the distance between the middle point in the valley is larger than the than the middle point in the peak. So that that sort of skewness is is somehow reflected in this final histogram of the results. But I think we have a good model. So, so we're almost finished. Remember that we have. Uh, this was the first part of the video. Now we have played a little bit with the hour correlation and the partial correlation function. We have played with a couple of models in order to remove these peaks in the data. We also have checked for significance of the coefficients. We have analyzed the residuals and we have used uh, bo both criteria. I, I have focused on this one, but basically because most of the time when the data is large enough, both models have the same parameters. So you can see that we have different models. And one idea that I haven't discussed so far is that the, the best model is the one with the lowest parameters, but in case that we have comparable values of this criteria, the one with the lowest coefficients. But in this case, clearly, this model, this fit number three, is much lower than before, so, so this is the winner. And the last point, as usual, um, and as I've repeated over and over again, you have to trust your eyes. So what we are going to do now is plot the, the original data and the fit. So let's do some R plot or the variable Y. And now let's add some outer layer with fit number three, fitted data. And we're going to call this Arima. Uh, let me remember. 011, 011, 12. Okay. So here we go. You can see that the model is, is pretty nice. So we are capturing. This is too long. So let me call this simply fit. Okay, you can see that there are some slight differences and that actually they are worth studying. So if you are interested in this problem in particular, this is an electricity demand thing, probably you would like to know why this year was some, somehow our model is underestimating this peak and why here I'm overestimating probably the valley. But okay, it doesn't matter at this point. So my, my point here was that with a very simple model, we are capturing more or less the trend, the seasonality, and also the differences in the seasonality. So again, as, as a final bonus track, let's say, let's use Auro Arima for Y. Sorry, let's use trace equals true to see the guts of the model. Okay. And here we go. So let me put this bigger. So the chosen one is pretty much like, it's, it's similar to the one. So my, my winner model was actually 011011, but we saw that in a previous step, and actually I haven't tested this, but basically 01, sorry, 110 and 011 in the seasonal part were almost the same. So 
Th this means that we cannot distinguish between these models. And the coefficients are pretty significant. You can see that if you multiply this by 2, this is far away from this coefficient. And the same here. Other way to look at this, if you divide this by this one, this is almost 10. That means that this is 10 sig you are 10 sigma confident that this is a good fit. But again, you can see that our ARIMA is performing pretty much at that our simple inspection, but we are happy because we have done this using our brain, so we are pretty much confident that this is the best model that we can produce.